praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. We want to appreciate everyone for joining this broadcast this morning. And today we'll be sharing on something very important. Overcoming the fear of failure. Sometimes in life, people go through challenges, opposition situations, and unknown to most people, they can begin to entertain the fear of failure. The fear of failure can keep us away from trying. The fear of failure can stop us from advancing towards our purpose. For most people, couldn't stretch, they couldn't pursue their dream, they couldn't pursue their destiny because of the fear of failure. Can I say this to you? Don't be afraid of failure because being afraid of failure can keep you away from manifesting your purpose. We can truly manifest our purpose when we are scared of failure. We can't. If David was afraid of failure, he couldn't stand before Goliath. When he saw Goliath, he knew this is an opportunity. We must learn to see opportunity in every storm, in every opposition. It doesn't matter what the situation is right now. Don't be afraid of failure. You are not called to fail. You are called to succeed. You are not called to lose. You are called to win. For most people, they quit because of the previous failures they had. Maybe a failure in business. Maybe a failure in any area of life. And they got frustrated as a result of the failures of the past. Can I say this to you? Those who have done great things, outstanding things, are people who rose above failure. They rise above failure. You know, the, 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 the spirit of fear gives us false idea that it's not going to work. You're trying to start a business and you begin to entertain the fear. It's not going to work. The, the, the spirit of fear gives you this impression that you, you can't make the difference. And this is why you can't be afraid of failure. Because being afraid of failure can keep you away from releasing the strength that is within you. There is a strength in you. One thing about the enemy of your soul, he never reminds you of your strength. He always reminds you of your weakness. The devil always wants to remind you of your weakness. He wants to remind you of your limitation. He wants to remind you of your struggle. That is what he wants to talk about. He doesn't want to talk about your strength because he knows that there is a strength within you. He knows there is a greatness within you. Can I say this to you? There is a greatness in you. There is a greatness in you. There is a greatness in you. This is why you don't have to be afraid of failure, overcoming failure. How do I overcome this attitude or or this uh, uh, in the thing going on inside of me telling me you're gonna fail you're gonna fail you're gonna fail number one remember that failure can be avoided that is the first thing you need to establish that failure can be avoided and the question is how do i avoid the failure in joshua chapter 1 verse 6 joshua chapter 1 verse 6 and to verse 7 God started talking to Joshua about the importance of being courageous. He started talking to Joshua. You have to be strong. You have to be courageous. Knowing that courage will keep you going. Even when you don't understand the situation. Even when you don't understand how it's going to play out. But you are courageous. Courageous people don't fail. Courageous people don't lose. And he said to Joshua... Be strong and be very courageous. Your dreams and vision comes to pass when you're strong and courageous. 
your dreams and visions come to pass when you are strong and when you are courageous. And God said to Joshua, be strong and be very courageous. This is one of the keys to rising above limitation, rising above opposition, and rising above failure. For most people, they allow the external factors, the opposition, the the external factors to stop them from reaching their full potential. You can rise above the limitation when you have the right picture on your mind. You can rise above the limitation when you have the right picture. When you have the right picture, the picture of victory, not the picture of defeat. The picture of success, not the picture of failure. The picture of dominion, not the picture of slavery. The picture of influence, not the picture of oppression. You need to begin to have a a picture of the quality of the life you want to have. It's so important. How to overcome failure? You have to believe that failure can be avoided. And one of the ways we avoid failure is to choose to be courageous and do what God has instructed us to do. Whatever God has instructed you to do should be your focus. This is how you rise above failure. So when God gave an instruction to Joshua, he said, be strong and be very courageous. Why should Joshua be strong? Joshua has to be strong because he has an assignment from God. And because he has an assignment from God, these assignments must be taken serious. This assignment, Joshua got to fight for this assignment. Joshua got to stand for this assignment. Joshua doesn't have to fail because God has invested resources in Joshua. The same way God invested resources in Joshua, God has invested resources in you. Courage is a resource. Wisdom is a resource. Understanding is a resource. Revelation knowledge is a resource. And God has invested so much in you. So you can avoid to fail. You, 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 you can't fail. You can make up your mind and say to yourself, I'm going to fulfill my destiny. I don't care what is going on right now. I don't care the situation. I will fulfill my destiny. I'm going to fulfill my dream. Can I say this to you? Don't allow setbacks to change your focus and your passion for continuity. Don't allow setbacks. A lot of people allow setbacks to keep them away from trying. They allow setbacks. Everyone will make me experience setback, but you choose to rise above your setback. And God gave a word to Joshua. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate during day and night, and you will make your way prosperous. That's it. in principle number two. To rise to overcome failure, you have to constantly stay in meditation of the word. To rise above failure, you have to stay in meditating on the word. There is something about meditating on scriptures that brings inspiration, wisdom, and understanding. In Joshua 1 verse 8, the word of the Lord came to Joshua. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and you will make your way prosperous. The prosperity and the success of Joshua is directly related to the application of God's word. If Joshua is going to be successful, God has given him the blueprint for his success. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. He went forward to establish, thou shalt meditate on it day and night, and you will make your way prosperous. Making your way prosperous begins as you meditate on the word. Because God's word will supply supernatural nutrients supernatural wisdom, supernatural insight, supernatural understanding to interpret the situation. God's word. So he said to Joshua, he said, this book of the law shall not depart from you. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from you because the, 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 the word of God was given to us 
to determine our thinking. The word of God was given to us to determine our behavior. The word of God also was given to us to determine our belief system. You see, the way we believe should come from God's word, not from experience. I said, what we believe should come from the word of God and not from experience. Experience shouldn't tell us what to do. What will tell us what to do is the word. So he said to Joshua, meditate on this Lord day and night. This is how you begin to develop the confidence for continuity. If you want to develop confidence for continuity, you got to persistently meditate on the word. Because when you meditate on the word, it helps you to have inspiration. It helps you to have a vision. It helps you to begin to move in the direction of the the will of God. To rise, to overcome failure, you got to meditate on God's word. There is a strength in the word. There is a wisdom in the word. The spirit of God begins to quicken the word. The the third key to overcoming failure, the fear of failure, is to consistently listen to the Holy Ghost. It's listening to the spirit of God that helps you to know the direction to follow. We can't truly succeed without depending on the spirit of God. We can't truly succeed without depending on on the spirit of god is when you depend on god's spirit he helps you to see things in the direction of the will of god when you depend on god's spirit he helps you to begin to see things in the direction of the will of god you see the bible said in romans chapter 8 verse 11 in romans 8 11 he said if the spirit that raised jesus from the dead dwells in you he will quicken he will quicken your mortal bodies. It is the spirit of God that quickens. It is the spirit that brings inspiration. It is the spirit that brings direction. If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus was not the one that raised himself from the dead. It was the spirit of God. And if that spirit dwells in you. He will instruct you. He will guide you. He will inspire you. He will motivate you. He will give you wisdom and revelation in making decisions that will lead to maximizing your possibilities. If that spirit dwells in you, he brings inspiration. He brings idea. He brings insight. He brings understanding. The Holy Spirit has the ability to reveal the past, the present, and the future. The Holy Spirit has the ability to reveal the past, the present, and the future. So he knows what works. He knows what will produce the result. This is why Jesus said, I sent you a comforter. He is your teacher. He is your counselor. He is your advocate. He has all you need for this journey. The Holy Ghost have all you need to maximize life. This is why I talk much about the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, we'll, we'll be in confusion, we'll be in darkness, it will see limitations that we can't rise above. But what happens is that the Holy Spirit begins to show us what to do. You see, when you depend on the Holy Spirit, He gives you insight into the issue. You are trying to use your brain to resolve the matter. Why not ask the Holy Ghost? Why not pray in the Spirit? Why not ask the Spirit of God? He knows something about the situation that you have no clue of. He saw what they did. He saw what they said. He knew how they did it. So he can reveal to you. He is in your life to reveal. He is in your life to show you the path to follow. Unknowing to most people, they don't recognize the Holy Spirit. And if you don't recognize the Holy Spirit, you have the journey just by yourself. You, you're going to carry all the burden, all the stress, all the frustration. The Holy Spirit makes the job easy. The Holy Spirit makes the job easy. It is the Spirit that shows us this is the truth. He's called the Spirit of Truth. And if the spirit of truth is your companion, that means you will lack inspiration for advancing your vision. 
if the spirit of truth is your companion, if the spirit of truth is your companion, you will lack inspiration for advancing your destiny. It's called the spirit of truth. He gives you the truth about the situation. So when you have the truth and do the application of the truth, it empowers you to overcome failure. The spirit of truth. This is why you got to depend on the Holy Ghost concerning your job, concerning your relationship, concerning your calling. Every aspect of your life, you need the help of the Spirit. Every aspect of your life, not just your spiritual life. The Holy Spirit is not only in your life to help you grow up spiritually, to help you do spiritual things. He is he, He's more than that. The Holy Ghost is more than praying in tongues. You see, he is a, the life manager. He helps you to manage your life, your finances, your relationship, your skill, your potential, your opportunity, your platform. He helps you to manage it. He is our life manager. He is our life manager, directing us, telling us where to invest, telling us what not to invest into, telling us how to use our timing. You see, the Holy Spirit is not just in your life, only for spiritual activities. He's not in your life, only for spiritual activities. A lot of Christians have reduced the Holy Ghost only for praying in tongues, only for spiritual activities. He is involved in all aspects of life. Remember that it was there in creation. Remember the Holy Ghost was there in creation. In Genesis 1 verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of God moved. The Spirit moved. And when the Spirit moved, something amazing happened, and God said. So he is in your life to move you forward. He is in your life to move you into your direction. If you listen to the Holy Ghost, you will never know another day of failure. If you listen to the Holy Ghost, how do you overcome failure? Listening to Him will give you practical approach to situations. Listening to the Holy Ghost will give you practical approach to situation. Practical approach to situation. He shows you what it means to do strategic planning. He shows you what it means to plan things, how to plan your resources, how to plan your life. The Holy Spirit is in our life to do this. So the Spirit of God has an answer for every question. So listen to the Holy Ghost. And when you listen to the Holy Ghost, things happen. When we speak, pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes, you can speak to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. You can talk to him. You can tell him, Holy Spirit, what do I do about his finance? What do I do about this? The Spirit of God comes with peace. His presence projects peace. His, pre his presence magnifies peace. The Holy Ghost, you can talk to him. He's a person. You can talk to the Holy Spirit. You can tell him, dear Holy Spirit, I want you to lead me. Help me in this deal. Help me in this business. Holy Spirit, is this man the right man for me? Show me what to do. Show me what to do. Remember that the Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. Show me what to do. Holy Spirit, show me. Holy Spirit, reveal to me. Holy Spirit, show me what to do. I need to know what to do. The Holy Ghost is in your life to reveal Jesus. He's in your life to reveal the will of God. If you listen to the Holy Ghost, He will give you inspiration to deal with the situation. If you listen to the Holy Ghost, He will empower you to unlock your possibilities. The Spirit of God has the answer to overcoming the fear of failure. He knows, he, he, he will show you things to do, he will reveal to you, he will tell you how to, what to say to your boss. Unknowing to most of us, we neglect our helper, the Holy Spirit is called our helper. We neglect our helper. Unknowing to most of us, 
we neglect our helper. And when you neglect your helper, you, 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 you have no one to stand with you. When you neglect your helper, you have no one to stand with you. You have no one to encourage you. The Holy Spirit is your helper. The Holy Spirit. Let him help you today. I pray for you right now that the Spirit of God will help you concerning your vision, concerning your life, concerning your calling, concerning this decision you are about to make right now. May you receive from the Holy Ghost. May you receive from the Spirit of the Lord. May you walk in the counsel of the Spirit of God. May He reveal to you what to say. May He give you inspiration to break limitation. May He inspire you to do the impossible. Thank you, Father. If, if you're watching this broadcast and you have not known Jesus as your Lord and Savior, He's here to heal you. He's here to save you. And He can change your situation. If you're not born again, Jesus is here to save you. And you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord I'm my Savior. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. And if you pray that prayer with us, you're born again, and you can believe God for Bible believing church where you can go and worship and grow in your walk with the Lord. And also, we're starting our conference today. Kingdom Empowerment Conference begins today. It's going to be by 7 a.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be a powerful conference for anyone who is interested in building in the kingdom. So, we're encouraging people to partner with the Kingdom Empowerment Conference. You can partner with us in this conference. And you can partner with us by praying for us for the conference. And also, believing God for an offering, a seed to sow to support Kingdom Empowerment Conference. It begins today. And it's going to last for the next six days. It's going to be a time of explosion of revelation, inspiration, and greater things of the Spirit. So 7 a.m. Eastern Time, American Eastern Time, is going to be a time that the conference will be holding live here on the scope. So we encourage you to tell your friends, text someone, and let them get involved in this conference throughout this week. We're having this conference. And also, the Christ Kingdom Bible School is coming up. Or the Christ Kingdom Bible School is coming up. And, okay, the time is going to be 7 a.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be the uh, four hours from now. Four hours from now. The conference will be on four hours from now. Someone was asking the time. Four hours from now, the conference is going to be on. So, King, or oh, you are watching from Australia. Thank you very much for watching me from Australia. Thank you, King. Okay. So, I know the Australian time is a little bit different from the, the U.S. time. So, you, uh, so four hours from now, we'll be right on on the conference, and we also say thank you to all our friends and partners, all those that are partnering with us from around the world. Thank you for your partnership, and thank you. Central time is going to be, I think, the central time is going to be by by in the next that that will be by six a.m. Central time, six a.m. Central time. So thank you for watching, and God bless you. So Christ Kingdom Bible School is coming up. And it's going to be life-changing. The Bible school is for free. But we encourage people to partner with us as we can continue to do the broadcast and taking care of the internet bills and the things we need to pay to keep having the classes every day. But the Bible school is free for all. So we encourage you to, whatever the Lord will lead you, to partner with the Bible school will help in multiplying the reaching of more and more people during the classes. Thank you for watching. And I'll be right back soon. And don't forget, there is greatness in you. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, It's Faithman Teaching, on YouTube. When you go there, you will have so much revelation that will change your way of thinking. We love you. Until our next broadcast, don't forget, there is greatness in you.